when I say indie game, okay, my ideal vision of like playing indie games is going to itch.io. Have you guys ever gone to itch.io? The three big places that you get online games is Steam, GOG, and itch.io. And you should always get it from itch.io or GOG when you can. Um, because Steam is shit, all right? It's not a, like game. When I say indie games, I mean like this is like a guy worked on this. You know what I mean? Or like two people worked on it, and it's their first project, and they had five dollars. I mean like a proper indie game. Some people nowadays, when they say indie developers, what they mean is not triple A developers, right? Like, have you seen what Scorn looks like? The game Scorn. I don't want to gatekeep or nothing, but like in my personal opinion, I don't really think an indie game can look like Scorn. It's like a huge, high-fidelity game with unique environment. Like, this takes a lot of time and money. You know? Like, look at this. The full game is 2.5 hours. Well, they're, they're speed running through the puzzles. This, this is like a speed walkthrough. Well, it was in development for like a decade. What was the team like? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Scorn, Wikipedia. What, how, how many, how many people worked in this? Unreal Engine 4, uh, 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 developers, developer, Ebb Software, how many fucking people? How many fucking people, Ebb Software, how many fucking people? Serbian Game Development Studio founded in 2013. How many people? 10 full-time team, okay, never mind. 10 is actually a pretty small team. Sorry, all right, I'm gatekeeping. Sorry, sorry. Up next, we're going to do Carrion. A highly acclaimed game. Woo! Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. This is very fluid. We are really spreading our biomass. This feels like an apocalypse scenario. We've been escaped for like... Mm, 10 minutes. Okay, this feels like an apocalypse event. What could possibly stop this? Hmm. Oh, hey! Whoa, they're shooting! Oh my god! Never mind, we can die. How the fuck do 9mm bullets kill something this big? That one guy saved the world, oh my god. You need to add a command that tells chat to jerk off before the stream. I am always saying that. Always jerk off before the Vosh stream. I'm always warning you guys. There are good fap games on itch.io. Can we pull one up and just all deal with this together like men? Uh, does itch.io have not safe for work games? I've actually never looked for them there, so I don't I don't know. I usually just browse from front page. I have never actually bought a not safe for work game. I mean, I've bought games that have had nudity, like, like The Witcher, I guess, but I've never bought a, a porn game. Though there's one I've had my eye on. It's been in early access for a while. What's it called? Cloud Meadows or something? There's an artist who, like, manages the team, and they do, like, pixel art animations that are incredibly high quality. Like, really, really, really high quality. Fosh, what is your opinion on Kazuki Takahashi and Yu-Gi-Oh? Dude was based and encouraged voting to oust fascists like Abe. He also made my childhood S-A-D-G-E. Yeah, I've never really cared for Yu-Gi-Oh, but the manga cut has always seemed like a really fucking cool guy. And I respect that. Also, apparently he died a hero. Didn't the Yu-Gi-Oh manga cut, like, go out trying to save someone from drowning? Oh yeah, my main problem with most porn games is that they're just fucking repellent. Like, most porn games are just disgusting. Like, have you ever just been browsing Steam? If you if you don't have porn games, like, blocked, you'll sometimes get recommendations on your discovery feed. And they're just, like, repellent. They're like these ugly 3D... They're either anime games, in which case it's the same anime art style you've ever seen everywhere. Like, they all, all the girls just look like girls you've seen before. Because people who make derivative anime art, like, it looks the same as everything else. And then you have those awful 3D porn games. The main thing that fucks me up is, like, if you are going to do a porn game, fine, that's your god-given right as an American or whatever else, okay? But stop doing the shit where it's like the game part is doing match three fucking color match games, and then it's like, oh, you did well? Now you get to see my titties. That's so stupid. Stop. If you're going to make a game, make a fucking game. 
What do you think of visual novels in the genre? My problem is that a lot of visual novels, like, the problem is, listen, okay? If you just want to draw porn, draw porn. If you want to make a porn game, make a fucking game. Um, a lot of these visual novels are just, like, poorly written, like, time-wasting click-throughs to get to the titties, you know? What's the ideal porn game? Okay, first things first. Can we all agree on one thing? The ideal porn game is not using those shitty stock 3D models that a ton of porn sites have, where they have a woman with quadruple G tits and a guy who looks like John Everyman, like, like cardboard box fuck, fuck each other, you know? Um, uncanny valley ass shit. There's a reason why Overwatch blew open the SFM porn scene, and that's because Overwatch's models have this perfect mix of, like, cartoony aestheticization while also looking realistic enough to be erotically interesting. I still- okay, I'm sorry, I've been thinking about the question, and I want to answer it properly, okay? I still maintain that the best sex anything that I've seen in a game was from Divinity Original Sin 2, which is this massive RPG where you have a small party and you can get to know them extremely well. And at one point in the game, you can have sex with, if you have a good relationship with, one of the party members. It doesn't show the sex, it just like describes it. But it was actually impactful to me. To me, it felt like, it, it felt like a legitimate character moment rather than just like a hot extra thing you can do. So for me, where's this coming from? We were just talking about good porn games. So for me, a really cool porn game would be like a proper, maybe like early Final Fantasy style RPG where they they build a proper fucking RPG, like an actual game with mechanics and shit, and interesting ideas. And they just develop on the porn thing as an additional thing that gives you the context, right? Because I don't give a fuck about like, oh, here's a hot character I drew. You did like 30 seconds of dialogue. Now you get to have the sex with her. Like, give it the context. Give me a 20 hour campaign. Seriously, build a real fucking game. Put in the, the, the fucking effort. Did you have sex with Los? Um, no, actually, I had sex with the uh, the elf. Um, not Losa. She was my second pick, though. Would you play Elden Ring dating sim? Sibyl, yeah, thank you. You're describing Cyberpunk 2077? Okay. Never mind. Keep going. You guys get what I'm talking about, though, right? Like, the reason why you would make a porn game rather than just making images or videos is because the interactivity of the game gives you the ability to develop context that makes the eroticism more valuable. Um, that's, that's not just my, like, hot take. That's, like, objectively, that's, that's just, that's the, the, the potential, you know? Um, so that's what should be done. What would be more ideal? A psychological tactical game with asterisk 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 elements directed by Kojima, or an emotional game with monsters directed by Guillermo del Toro. I want to see Guillermo del Toro make a game. He helped make PT and Death Stranding. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Guillermo del Toro was literally a character in Death Stranding. You know what type of game I feel like you could get a lot of mileage in, in like the not safe work category? Obviously with all adult characters, because, you know, the, the games like this have a tendency to um, have child characters. But something like in the, in the Earthbound line of like quirky RPG, something that's like deliberately esoteric, I feel like potentially that could, um, because games like that have a tendency to hook you in with the character's struggles like really well, you know what I mean? Like, think about Amori or Undertale, especially Undertale. In six hours, Undertale managed to make tens of millions of people adore, uh, like, uh, some 8-bit pixel art characters, right? Like, it, that, there, there's something about that format that I think really makes us empathetic. So that would probably be a good genre of game to try it out in. Hey, aesthetic question for people in chat. How do you guys feel about retro games that mix texture resolutions? See how the meat over there is like insanely low res, but like this right here is way higher res in comparison, and the maggots are like way higher, higher res? You think it's lazy? I think it can be done well, but I do think sometimes it's all 3D games work smell. Yeah, but they, they don't do it like in a huge degrees generally. 
How do you feel about games whose art style is designed to be deliberately off-putting or busy? Um, I like it. I mean, I thought, um, I really enjoyed, um, Cruelty Squad. Cruelty Squad's visuals were designed to be repulsive. Alright, I'm gonna be forthcoming with you guys. Next save we find. I'm taking it. And I'm playing more receiver too. Even this is too much for me. Too scary or boring? Scary! Um, I can- I can deal with horror elements a little bit more when there's like a mechanic driving me forward. But in- in, in this case, as is often the case with horror games, right? Like, it- the- 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 the whole point of the game is keep walk- Oh! Speak of the devil. Or... God. Um, you keep walking forward to experience more spooks. You know what I mean? You'd probably hate endoparasitic then. Um, what- what is this game, people? Endoparasitic -para then. Endoparasitic. Rated highly. This looks... interesting. Hold on. Okay. Okay, okay, that looked unique. No, yeah, okay. Is it an actual game with an ending or is it just like the enemies keep getting stronger until you die? You made it 37 minutes. Actual game? Bazinga, let's get it. Let's go to itch.io. Remember, you always wanna get it from GOG or itch.io because those games are DRM free. If Steam ever goes down, has any issues, they can pull games, they can fuck with you. Uh, but if you buy a game from GeoGear, Bosh, would you rather deal with a horde of zombies or a horde of velociraptors? Velociraptors are probably a bit more dangerous. If you buy something from itch.io or from GOG, you own it. It is your game. It is on your computer. It's your file. It's yours. You can copy it. You can do whatever. It's yours. Obviously, I don't recommend copying it and putting it up online for other people to pirate, because these are usually indie developers who I think deserve, um, you know, payment for their work, of course. Um, I'm just saying, like, it is, it is yours. Gavin promised that if Steam ever went down, they'd make it offline compatible. I don't trust him. I know he's said that, but I don't trust him. And there have been times before where that just hasn't happened. Also, games on Steam sometimes do have, like, DRM measures that aren't Steam-dependent, right? Like, if, the, if a game is put on itch or GOG, you know that shit will just be on your computer and it's yours. But on Steam, sometimes, like, the file, even if Steam would work offline reliably, which, doubt, um, it, sometimes the files themselves are just, th there's something else about them, you know, there's some other, some other concern with DRM. It's complicated. I don't pretend to be an expert, but I highly recommend using itch and um, GOG when you can. Yeah, like with Stadia, right? Like if Stadia goes down, then there you fucking go, right? Um, it's 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 so easy to lose everything now because everything is subscription based. Nobody owns movies or TV shows. All you do is have subscriptions. Yes, and Stadia went super down. Yeah, all you have is subscriptions to Netflix and Hulu and Apple TV and blah blah blah, right? So if something gets taken off all these like sites, then like you're fucked, right? I experienced this for a while, because for a while after it got taken off Netflix, there was no place to watch Fully Cooly in the West. Um, seriously, there was a period of time during which my favorite anime was, through legal channels, completely inaccessible. Like, period, you know? Uh, the only way to watch it, legally, at that time, would be to literally own it, to have the DVDs or Blu-rays. Um, or to torrent the files if one was to do that, but I never would. Oh, 
Other critical things. GOG has way more support for older games. Uh, Steam has older games on it, but oftentimes they're shitty PC ports that barely function. Whereas GOG will package in fan patches or like uh, other additions that make it like old games widescreen compatible or just play easily on modern systems. Like seriously, try playing like Thief 2 Golden uh, or Thief 2 um, um, uh, Metal Age on Steam versus GOG. Like try try playing like System Shock 1, right? Like, like huge. Um, also, I think the game culture on itch.io is really nice. Itch.io has always struck me as, like, a very consumer and developer-friendly market, right? Like, it's, it's a, a lot of these indie games are just free from amateurs or from, like, talented people who just want to put their art out there, you know, for other people to enjoy, which is, which is awesome. Yeah, uh, and a lot of these are pay-what-you-want games, too. You say games with mods ruins the art. Oh, no, 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 no. I say I don't enjoy games. I don't tend to mod games up that often because I like feeling like I'm playing a cohesive and relatable experience. But a lot of these mods are literally about making the game playable, which is totally fine. Like widescreen support. Like, yeah, okay. Like that's, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, like adding mouse look and system shock. Support the developer by paying above the minimum price. And you can tip people on itch.io. Look at that. This doesn't show anything personal, right? No, it doesn't. You can tip people on itch.io, which I think is really, really, really nice. You know, if if we live in a world where baristas will make me a coffee and then spin around the iPad to pay, and it's like, here, 25% tip for handing you the coffee, then I sure as shit am willing to tip fucking game developers for, you know, making a goddamn video game. I know that a lot of, like, the video game industry right now is actual fucking dog shit. Um, with all the microtransactions and loot boxes and blah, 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 the live service model, blah, blah, blah. You all know how this goes. Uh, but we are really living in an indie game renaissance right now. Like, properly. If you are have a bit of an open mind, if you're willing to explore a broader range of experiences, and you just hop on GOG or itch.io especially from time to time, like, insane shit is being made. Like, insanely good shit. Do you have some examples? Oh man, fuck. No, one of the things that I like to do, because I, I don't just remember it off the top of my dome, is take a look at the top runners for the Game Maker's Toolkit Game Jam. The top producers for the Game Jam usually are smaller dev teams that have like itch.io games that are out, and they tend to have really good shit. It's crazy what people can make in just 48 hours, and then you think like, fuck man. If they could do that in 48 hours, like, give that team a month. Like, what can they... There are de there are developers out there, they make, like, serialized games. Like, they'll make, like, a game every month or two months. And they're, like, good, you know? They're short, they're small, but they're good. It's really, really awesome. It's, it's to me, it's just like having an, an online artist who you really like. Or, or, or there's, like, a, a little mini zine that you like following, or you pick up from a local syndicated comic store or something. Like, something like that, you know? It's just, uh, it's a good practice. Good practice.